guys, welcome back to Evelyn and Peter. I'm so excited to show you the design I have for you today. It's actually this cute little wrap that I'm wearing. So let me just stand up and show you really quick what it looks like. Um, it's actually still nameless right now. I'm hoping to release this next week, but I still haven't settled on a name. Um, but this is the design and I wanted it to be pretty wide and long to be extra cozy. And I like wearing it like this, just around my shoulders. I like wearing it around the house to keep my arms warm. It's super cozy. Um, you can see the nice detail that it has in the back here from the way that it is constructed. You can also throw one side up over your shoulder like this. This is a fun way to wear it. Or even toss both sides up like this, wear it like a little blanket scarf. So a bunch of different ways that you can style it. Um, and you might recognize the stitch. It's actually moss stitch, but might look a little bit different to you because this is constructed corner to corner instead of in a normal row that you would usually see with moss stitch. We'll be working it diagonally. So if you've ever made a corner to corner blanket, it's made just like that, working down here in the first corner and then all the way up and it's actually two rectangles and then just seamed down the middle together to make that nice little line in the back that you see. So I used Lion Brands Pima Cotton, which looks like this, and it's just a worsted weight cotton yarn. Um, this kind has a ton of really pretty colors and I used Spice. This one is mineral yellow, the blue is dragonfly, and then I believe the cream color is um, vintage. I think it's called vintage. So those are the four colors that I used. Um, this pattern is available as a kit, so if you wanna get the same kind of yarn as me, you can go to linebrand.com, and I'll have the link to that below, but you can purchase the kit, which comes with all of the yarn you need to make this wrap, plus, the um, digital PDF pattern. So you can do that, or you can follow along with this video with the free crochet pattern, which is on my blog, enpcrochet.com. And I'll have the link to that below as well. And then if you prefer having the version that you can print out with no ads, I also have both of those available in Ravelry and my Etsy shop. So I'll link to all of that for you. And I recommend following along with the pattern as you watch the video. It has um, all the information and like different, um, however many stripes of color that you need before switching color. And it tells you the repeat and um, everything's written out. It has all the yardage information and the hook sizes, all that good stuff. So I recommend following along with that. So I hope you guys like this pattern. Let me know below in the comments if you enjoyed it. And I appreciate so much if you subscribe and thanks so much for following along and I hope you guys like it. So to get started, you'll need four different colors of cotton yarn. I'm using Lion Brand's Pima Cotton Yarn and it's just a worsted four weight. And I'm using the colors Dragonfly, Mineral Yellow, Vintage, and Spice. And you'll also need a five millimeter or H crochet hook, some scissors, and then a yarn needle to weave in your ends. So if you're following along with my color changes, we're going to begin the wrap with the color vintage. And to start, just go ahead and make a slip knot. So wrap the yarn around and then pull the yarn through the loop. And then you can insert your hook and pull it snug and then you can just drop the tail of the yarn out of the way and pick up your working yarn. And to begin, you will need to chain three. So yarn over and pull through the loop three times for a total of three chains. And then you'll definitely wanna use some stitch markers for this project, just for the beginning to keep your place until you get the hang of where you need to actually place your stitches. And you're just going to take the stitch marker and just lay it completely over your work right there over the three chains. You're not inserting it into a stitch, just over the chains. 
And then we're gonna work our first single crochet into that very first chain made. So insert your hook into the first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. And that's one single crochet. And you can see the stitch marker is keeping our spot because that's where we will be inserting our hook later on. Next, we're beginning row two. So chain three and then turn your work. And then we'll be making one single crochet into that space where our stitch marker is keeping our spot. So you might need to wiggle it around a little bit and just make sure you can insert your hook. But right where your stitch marker is, insert your hook. And then you can remove the stitch marker if you need to to make more space. And then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. That's one single crochet. And then chain one. And then you'll be working one more single crochet into that very same spot. But before you do that, you'll want to place your stitch marker again. Not onto any stitch or any loop, just place it right over there, over your chain one that you just made. And then insert your hook into that very same spot from your first single crochet and work one more single crochet. So we've made a single crochet, chain one, single crochet into the same stitch from the row below. And then this time we're going to chain two and turn our work. Okay, and then to start round three, you'll want to work your first single crochet into that chain one space, which is where our stitch marker is. So you can see our stitch marker is right there where the chain one is. That's where we will be making our first stitch. So insert your hook into the chain one space from the row below. Then yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through both for one single crochet. And then chain one. And then you can remove your stitch marker. And then you can see at the next spot is that single crochet and we're gonna skip that single crochet. And then the section right after it is the chain three space from the previous row and that's where we'll be working our stitch. So skip that very next single crochet and insert your hook into the chain three space. Work one single crochet chain one and then work a second single crochet into that very same spot and that is row three completed so for row four we're going to chain two and then turn our work then again you can see there's our single crochet and right after the single crochet is the chain one space And we'll be working one single crochet into that chain space. So skip the single crochet and put your hook right into the chain space. Be sure that you're catching in the center of that chain space. Make sure you're not splitting any of the single crochets. You can look the, on the back and make sure that the legs are together. And then just chain one. And then you can see the next spot is a single crochet. We're going to skip that and we're going to work our stitch into the next chain one space. So insert your hook, work one single crochet, chain one again. And then you can see there's another single crochet and we're going to skip that as well. And then you can see at the very end is the chain two space from the row below. And that's where we will be inserting our hook. So make sure you're skipping the single crochet and put your hook right there at the very end in the chains two space. And then since we're at the end, we will now be working a single crochet, chain one, and then a second single crochet into that very same spot. So that is row four complete and you should have a total of four single crochet. And then we're just going to repeat this for every single row until we reach the first corner. So again, you wanna chain two 
and then you're going to skip your first single crochet you're only going to be working into the chain spaces from here on out so always insert be inserting your hook into the chain space so in that very first chain one space insert your hook and then you can work one single crochet and then chain one and then skip that next single crochet and insert your hook into the following chain one space single crochet chain one skip the next single crochet and in the next chain one space single crochet chain one and in that very last chain space which is the chain two space from the row below you'll be doing your increase so it's single crochet chain one single crochet so you'll always be doing a single crochet chain one in the chain one spaces and then at the chain two space at the very end you'll be doing your increase so there'll be a single crochet chain one single crochet and that ends row five and then again you can chain two and turn your work and you'll just be doing the exact same thing for this row as well so skip that first single crochet insert your hook into the chain one space work one single crochet chain one skip the single crochet insert your hook into the next chain space work one single crochet chain one skip the next stitch insert your hook into the chain space work one single crochet chain one skip the next stitch insert your hook into the chain space work one single crochet chain one skip the last single crochet and insert your hook into the chain two space and then again this is the increase so you're going to work a single crochet chain one single crochet all into the same space so that's six rows completed and you should have six single crochet for this row and now we'll be bringing in our second color so i'm using mineral yellow so to start the next row i'm going to bring in the new yarn so i'm going to show you guys how to do that so i just pulled out the last couple of stitches so i can show you how i changed my yarn so when you work that last single crochet chain one and then on that last single crochet where you do the increase you're not going to complete the single crochet all the way you're just going to have the last two loops on your hook so part of a single crochet and then instead of yarning over and pulling through with the vintage color you're just going to bring in your new yarn color place it on your hook and pull it through to complete that single crochet so now we've finished off but now we've brought in the new yarn color so you can drop the vintage color yarn and you can start holding the mineral yellow color and then continue on with your work as normal by chaining two and turning and you can kind of pull the tails of the yarn down a little snug to make sure that they're, they won't come loose and then just tuck them out of the way and then again you'll just be doing the same thing as normal so you can skip that first single crochet and then in that first chain space you'll just insert your hook and work your single crochet and then chain one this time using your mineral yellow color instead of the vintage color so work one single crochet chain one and then continue across with our normal pattern repeat so single crochet chain one skip one all the way across until you get to the very last chain two space which is where you will do your increase so work across as normal and you'll just be doing the same thing for every single row here on out until we reach the decrease areas so in that very last spot insert your hook and then work your single crochet chain one single crochet
and that completes row seven and you should have a total of seven single crochet and then you can just go ahead chain two turn your work and then if you haven't already you can go ahead and cut the vintage color yarn so that your skein isn't still attached Okay, and I'm just gonna show you guys a couple more rows. So just continue doing the exact same thing as we've been doing. It'll stay this way all the way up until the first corner, which I'll show you guys how to do. But just continue working one single crochet, chain one, skip one, all the way across the rows. And then when you reach the chain two space at the end of the row, you'll just work one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet, into that chain two space at the end of the row and then turning your work and beginning the next row as normal and you will want to make sure you're following along with the written pattern be that is free on my blog I'll link to that below um, and it has all of the color changes and all of that information that you need so the stitch is going to be exactly the same and then you can see how many rows you need for each color and I have that written out so you can just take a look and see that we'll be doing, for example, we've already done six rows of vintage, seven rows will be done of the mineral yellow, which is what we're doing right now. And then you'll bring in the dragonfly and do three rows of that. So it has all of that information. Just follow along with the color changes, doing the exact same stitch pattern for each one. And then once you complete row 49, um, I will come back here and show you guys how to do row 50, which is that very first corner area. So I'll show you guys how to do that decrease and then what to do from there. Okay, and now we have completed one full color sequence of this pattern, and I'm currently on row 50, so if you're following along with the pattern, row 50 is exactly the same as you've been doing, single crochet, chain one, skip one, but when you get to the very end of row 50, it's a little bit different. So you can see I have one more chain one space left, and we're gonna work a single crochet into that as usual. But instead of chaining one, you are not gonna chain one. Just gonna work one single crochet into it. And then you can see we're skipping that last single crochet, inserting our hook into the very end chain two space, and then working one single crochet. We are no longer increasing on this end because it's the corner. So all we did is work one single crochet into the chain one space and one single crochet into the chain two space. And as you know, for this pattern, we change colors in it and we've already done three of spice and it's time to change the color. So I'm just gonna pull out that last single crochet and then as normal work part of your single crochet but then with that very last yarn pull through, change to vintage and pull the new color through for the start of the next color. And then just go ahead as usual and chain two and turn your work. So now that was the end of row 50 and you should still have 49 single crochet because we didn't do that increase at the very end. Okay, and row 51 is slightly different as well. So those last two single crochet that we made in the previous row, we will be skipping over for this row. So chain two and then skip those first two single crochet and work your first single crochet in the first chain one space as normal. And then chain one, skip one, and you're back to working your usual stitches of single crochet, chain one, skip one all the way across the row. So all we did different was skip those two single crochets in the beginning and then just work your normal stitch re repeat all the way across. Okay, now we're 
at the end of row 51 and I just want to show you guys that it's the same thing as you've normally been doing. So you've worked all the way across and then when you get to the very last chain two space, work one single crochet, chain one and one single crochet into that same space and then you can just chain two and turn your work. And then for this row, which is row 52, you will just be repeating row 50. So to start off your row, just chain two, work one single crochet, chain one in the first space and in each space across. And then again, once you reach the last chain one space of the row, work one single crochet into that chain one space, do not chain one, and then work one single crochet into the chain two space at the end of the row and then turn your work. So you can see I've made my single crochet and then you're going to skip that last single crochet of the row and then no chaining and then just work your final single crochet into the chain two space and then as normal just chain two and turn your work and this is how we're going to be working this side of the panel from here on out. So again you're not going to work in the first two single crochet you're going to skip those and then just work your single crochet into that first chain one space and then chain one and skip one and then do this all the way across the row. So essentially you'll just re be repeating rows 50 and 51 um, until we reach the second corner and when we get to that section I'll show you guys how to work the second corner as well. And the color repeats will just be repeating again. So we're back on vintage, which is what we started out with. And all those color changes that you did will just be repeating all over again. Remember, it's written down on the blog if you want to take a look. So you can see we're no longer increasing out on one side. We're only lengthening it up on one side. So this is what's going to make it form into a rectangle. Okay, and you should have a total of 100 rows done now, and this is row 101. I've already started the row 101, and I'll show you guys how to end off that row. But you can see it's forming into a nice rectangle. And we've done two color repeats. So you can see the first color repeat ended at the first corner. And then we just repeated the same colors again and now we are at the second corner so from here on out we'll be decreasing on both sides so again i'm at row 101 and it's going to be the same thing as the first corner but instead of only doing it on one side we're going to be doing it on both sides now Okay, so now we've reached the second corner and we're no longer going to be lengthening this side of the panel. We're going to create the corner on this end as well. So I've been doing my single crochet, chain one, skip one across as normal. And you can see now I'm coming up to my last chain one space. And then into that chain space, you are only going to work one single crochet. So work one single crochet and you are no longer going to be making a chain. So instead of chaining one, you're just going to skip that last single crochet, insert your hook into the corner chain two space and work only one single crochet. So you will no longer be increasing on this side. Now it's just going to be single crochet, single crochet, and then turn your work. And we'll be doing the start of the rows will be the exact same now on both ends. So you can go ahead and chain two and turn your work. And now we'll be just doing the same thing as the other decrease area. You're just going to skip those first two single crochet and insert your hook into the first chain one space and work one single crochet into it. 
And now you can go back to doing your chain one, skip one, one single crochet. So just do the single crochet, chain one, skip one, all the way across the row. When you reach the end of the row, remember to work one single crochet into that last chain one space, and then skip the last single crochet and work one single crochet into the final chain two space. And you'll just be repeating row 101, which is the row that you just finished. You'll just repeat that for every single row. So now we're decreasing on both sides until it forms a point and I'll show you guys how to finish it off at the end. Okay, now we finished all the decrease rows and you can see I'm on row 148 and it shows me working a chain two. However, you should be working a chain one. So just ignore my chain two and you should only do a chain one. Doesn't matter too much if you accidentally do a chain two as well. And then just work one last single crochet into that chain two space. So that finishes off our very last row, and then you can just yarn over, pull through, and cut your yarn. And that completes one rectangle, and remember you need to make a total of two of these rectangles, and then I will show you how to seam both pieces together to finish off the wrap. So now I have both rectangles complete, and I've actually already seamed in the ends of my rectangle. I haven't noted in my pattern that on one of these panels, you should try and keep the tails of the yarn long enough to use for sewing. However, I did not think of that while I was making it and made my tails too short. So I've gone ahead and weaved those in, and I'll just be using a fresh yarn to show you how to sew. But if you've been following along with my pattern and you've left your tails long enough, then you can go ahead and use those tails and sew them together that way. That way you can save on yarn and not have to use a fresh piece. But I'm just gonna show you with my yarn. So I'm just using a yarn needle and all we're doing is laying both panels together, lining up the short side of rows one through 50 evenly so that it forms that nice little arch shape and we're just working the mattress stitch across. So using the same color yarn, insert your needle into the right panel from the inside towards the outside. And then you can see I'm just threading it through. And then I'm going back down the other direction into the other panel inserting my needle and pulling it back through. And then again, taking my needle and only going through the right panel, pulling the thread through. You're just gonna continue this process all the way up um, the short side of the two panels joining together. So you can use the same color yarn if you want to join it together. However, I found that it left a slight seam so you can see where it was joined. So I prefer to switch out the yarn color with the coordinating stripe color. So you can see here I'm using the vintage for the vintage stripes. And then once I hit the mineral yellow section, I'm going to just um, cut my yarn and join in with the mineral yellow. That way it just leaves a more seamless look. So I've completed with the vintage. I'm just gonna cut my yarn and now I'm gonna bring in the mineral yellow. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the mineral yellow and just mattress stitch across. And again, if you left tails that were long enough, I recommend using the tails instead so you have less ends to weave in. So just do the same thing. Work your mattress stitch up through with the mineral yellow and when you reach the blue, you can switch to blue. I also found that in the rows that only have one row of the color, so when you reach the one row of just vintage color, 
I didn't even bother switching out um, the color to vintage because it was just one small stitch so you couldn't even tell that I used a different color so for the vintage color you can see that um, blue is right before it so I just did um, blue for it and then in the second vintage row where it's just one row of it I just continued with red instead of switching out um, to vintage each time and having to cut more yarn I found that I didn't have to do that for the rows that only had one row of the color. So just go ahead and continue with the mattress stitch all the way up this short side of the wrap and then afterwards I'll show you guys how to weave in the ends. Okay so now I've joined the sides of the rectangles together but now we have these ends to weave in. It's very easy though just use your yarn needle and then I recommend weaving in the color with the coordinating color of the stripe. So if you're weaving in vintage, I recommend weaving it into a vintage stripe just to hide it a bit more. So just use your yarn needle and pull the tail through and then insert again and pull it through. And I recommend at least weaving each color in at least two to three times just to make sure that it's secure and your ends won't come undone. And afterwards you can cut all the tails and that is it. Your shawl is complete. You can go ahead and block it if it needs to be blocked. And I hope you guys loved this pattern and stay tuned for more.